I hope you enjoy your weekend. Uh, since we had five days, my computer has had just enough time to stop showing me a blue screen. Um, probably at least two weeks before Windows completely sabotages me again. I'm kidding. I hope it's not that long. I mean, who knows? Um, so we were uh, dividing polynomials. <clears throat> so um, this is what we wanted to prove, and I almost I almost did it. But let me recap. Uh, so. If we're working over a field and, and we have two polynomials, uh, say D, welcome. Right. Uh, two polynomials, A not, blah, blah, blah. And Q is made of Bs. And also Q has to be, I'm supposed to divide Q, P by Q, so Q cannot be zero. Um, P can be zero. Well, this is what we want to. We were proving that if you have two polynomials, there exists um, a unique quotient and remainder with two properties. One, that uh, P is the dividend times the quotient plus the remainder. And the degree of the remainder is strictly smaller than the degree of the denominator. That's what we were trying to prove. And the proof went like this. Uh, it went, uh, do it one term at a time. So try to um, induction on the degree of of P. So what we're trying to do is take P and lower its, uh, just find find a C that lowers it, its um, its degree and then apply the induction hypothesis and, and that's it. So what we did was um, we took um, a, so instead of dividing P by Q, you, you divide the, the leading terms. And then we have this polynomial, which I'm going to call P1. P1 is um, the result of taking P and subtracting a multiple of Q. So what you want to do is find the, the one multiple of Q that uh, reduces the degree. Uh, and, and this is the one. So what we did was look at the leading term and conclude that the degree of P1 is smaller than the degree of P. So, <clears throat> we can apply induction. There exists um, a quotient and a remainder such that I can divide now. So what we're doing is divide P1 by Q. So P1 uh, the result of the addition of P1 plus Q is C1, and the remainder is R1. 
and the degree of the remainder is smaller than the degree of the denominator. Am I recording? Oh yeah, I am. Oh wow. <clears throat> and, and now we're pretty much done because um, you you subtract some multiple of q. So you start with p. You subtract some multiple of q, you get to something of smaller degree, which is what you do when you do long division. Um, and then you subtract another multiple of q, and you get something of degree smaller than than q, which is which is your final goal, and you're done. Um, so. Since P1 is P minus something times Q, we conclude that from these two equations, um, just they're both equal to the same thing. So we can make both expressions equal to each other. Um, and now just leave P by itself on one side and you will have A N divided by B M Q plus C one Q plus R one, which of course I could write using the distributive law. <clears throat> like this, so this is my uh, results of the division, my quotient. This is my remainder. It has the degree welcome for some time to see the end of my uh, first slide. This has the degree less than the degree of P as desired. And and we're done. We're done with the existence. Um, we've shown um, C and R exist. I guess I haven't shown that they're unique, but that's easier. Any questions? Um, So, I mean, if you think, if you think of dividing integers, um, you could, you could do this exactly same way. You want to say P and Q are integers. You look at this proof, and it goes through step by step. Except for instead of the degree, you you need to take well just the the integer itself. So you want to divide P by Q. You do induction on P, and you say, well, if P is smaller than Q then I have nothing to divide, the quotient is zero. If P is bigger, just what you do is take one and, and take, you wanna divide 21 by five, just subtract five, and then you're dividing 15 by five, and then you, you make your problem smaller. By induction, you can, 16. Uh, by induction, you can divide the new number and then you get two equations that you can combine together. Okay. Um, you, you're still free to ask questions, but it seems like you don't have any, so I'm gonna move on. So what am I saying? Um, let's see if I can actually do a long division. Uh, so let's divide some polynomial. by another one. So I guess in my notation from before, this was P and this was Q. And the way we like to do it is, uh, at least the way you do it in the US, is you put this in a box. <clears throat> so then how do you do long division? You look at the, you look at the leading term of each one 
and and you divide the leading term of the, the numerator by the leading term of the denominator. And and you get in this case you get x squared. So this is what I was calling before a a n divided by v n to the x to the n minus m. And then um, and then you see after after subtracting the product of the product of these two you you see what else what you have left so you multiply these two and you get x to the fourth minus 2x squared so this is going to be an divided by vm x to the m minus m times q and you subtract them. So I think normally people don't write the minus sign here, but you are subtracting. Um, and you get two x squared plus x plus one. So you take p and you subtract this whole thing. Uh, what you get is what I was calling before p one. So the, the end result of this is that I've reduced the, the degree of the numerator. And now I can just uh, repeat the process. So um, to repeat the process, so of course, when you do induction, in practice, that becomes some sort of recursion or iteration, some sort of steps that you repeat. Um, so. Um, you take the, you look at the leading terms and you divide them. Now what I get is two, negative two, positive, yeah, positive two. Um, you multiply your uh, denominator by the new number in the quotient and you get two x squared minus four. And then you subtract, so you get x plus five. <clears throat> so we've done the division. This is our remainder. And probably the nicest way to write this down is saying that the numerator is the quotient we've obtained times the denominator plus the remainder, which um, I know I'm done because it has degree smaller than two. Uh, this is the first time in my life I do long division the American way. So I hope I didn't write things in the wrong place. Um, any questions? Oh, I, 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 I didn't hear that. Yeah, you were cutting off. I'm sorry, yeah, I was holding it down. Um, show us the way that you know how to do it. Because I think oh. I've seen it. Don't you just use no, no, no. the... Um, I go like this, right? So it's the same thing, but I just write things differently. The way I learned how to do it is I would go like this. So it's sort of the same thing, but everything's placed somewhere else. Um, Isn't there a version of it where... Um, you just kind of deal with the coefficients of the polynomials and you can just ignore the degree so long as you know to match them up. Oh, uh, so. That's what I was trying to get to, yeah. Where you go like this. Right, right. So that, uh, as far as I know, maybe there's a better version. That works when you divide by a degree one thing. So you want to divide x squared plus four plus one by x minus five. You can you can do this, write the coefficients, and then right here, five. Um, but only works for the this only works for the degree one things. So it's not I mean, it's not super useful. Yeah, I didn't know that. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, if, you know, if this was like x squared plus one plus x plus one, that's for, like what what do I write here? Doesn't 
I don't know, maybe maybe there's a way to do it, you know. Because I mean you're doing this, you're doing the exact same thing. The the thing is this is like a very, very neat way to organize it, you know. Uh, I don't know if when you have bigger degree there's any way that's as as nice of doing it. All right, any other questions? Okay, uh, so I haven't finished the proof um, because um, I haven't shown that Q and R are unique C and R. So the thing is, suppose we have P equals C1 Q plus R1 and P equals C2 Q plus R2, where the degree of R1 and the degree of R2 are both smaller than the degree of P. Um, I need to show that, that uh, there's no, you, you can't get two different answers for the division. Um, I mean, I've shown you an algorithm which has to give one answer, but I wanna be sure that any other algorithm won't give a different answer. Uh, but this is um, this is easy because just looking at the looking at the two equations, they're both equal to p, so I can just set them equal to each other. And then I see some multiples of q. I see some uh, I see some things that are not multiples of q. Makes me want to go like this. Put them, put all the Qs on one side, all the non-Qs on the other side. And since everything here has a Q, um, I can pull it out using the distributive law. And now, uh, I know I'm, I'm done because what's happening? Um, Q, so Q divides R2 minus R1. And also, um, but also I know I have another piece of information that I haven't used yet, right? Um, I've used the, I've used the equations. I haven't used the, the information on the degrees. I mean, this, this wouldn't be unique if I don't impose the degree uh, condition. I know that the degrees of both of them, so the degree of the difference as well, is uh, smaller than the degree of, of two. So how can a polynomial over a field, this is important, divide something of smaller degree? The only way, the only possible way is if, if, if it's dividing zero. Um, this means that R2 minus R1 is zero. Q, uh, C2 minus C1 is zero. Um, so they're equal as I, um, as I wish for. Okay, any questions? Okay, um, so so that was the division algorithm, um, and I mean, I'm certain you've you've probably seen it before, but this is really it, it's it's so important. The fact that you know, not knowing to do a long division, um, although it is nice to know, but just the fact that it's there makes so many nice things about polynomial rings be true that are not true about basically every other ring. Um, I mean, most rings are not as nice as polynomial rings. Um, and and now we're gonna prove a bunch of things that have to do with all come down at the end to the division algorithm. Uh, so the first thing I wanna look at is what happens when you divide by X minus A. So, 
you might know this, but you might not. Um, so what we have is, uh, again, we have a field. And let's say we have a polynomial. And, and an element in the field, then the, the claim is that A is a root of, of B if and only if um, X minus A divides the polynomial. <clears throat> which means uh, divides means that there is a Q such that P is Q times X minus A. So, um, so one implication is very, is very clear. Um, so let me start with that. Um, if you, if you have, If you have the P is a multiple of X minus A, then what happens is that when you plug in A, you have um, you have zero times something else. And you're done. What is not clear at all um, is is the other direction. I mean Maybe it's clear, but but I mean, in principle, it's it's definitely way less clear, and and it's not you know. This is not true for random functions. You think of differentiable functions, um, or you know, continuous functions. Um, some the thing is for some kinds of functions, this works. Functions with a zero are multiples of x minus a, but for some, it doesn't. Um, So, um, but it, it is true for polynomials. So, how do we prove the other direction? Um, what we do is say, suppose P of A uh, is zero. So, I want to show that P is a multiple of X minus A. So what I can do is look at the remainder. Um, divide P by X minus A and you will get an equation of the form P is some uh, some multiple of X minus A plus a remainder and you will have that the degree of the remainder is smaller than the degree of X minus A of the denominator, which is one. So R, R the remainder, R is, I mean, it's a polynomial, but it has degree zero. R is just some number, um, what should I call it? Um, or not. It's just a number in the field. So what I have is that P of X is this multiplication just up to a constant. And if you now substitute X equals to A, you have that P of A equals, well, zero. You plug in, any anything into a constant stays the same, of course. Um, so on the left, you have zero uh, by hypothesis. That's what we're assuming. On the right, um, well, this is zero. On the right, you have R naught. So, well, zero is R naught. And this implies 
then the effects is a multiple of x minus a as desired. <clears throat> Okay, I don't know if this was familiar or not. Um, anyway, are there any questions? So a nice conclusion yeah, we get from here is that P of A in, uh, always is the remainder of dividing um, B of X by X minus A. And, and Ruffini's law, where you go like this and you do the multiplication, is just a way to compute, um, compute P of A fast. Or sort of not fast, but doing broken into little steps. All right. So, um, another thing we can prove. Um, well, polynomials so I mean I'm never going to write k and not mean um, a field it's never going to be a ring So a polynomial of degree n has a most n roots. Okay, I should say um, a is a root of of p of x. Being a root means that the polynomial vanishes there. So if you have polynomial of degree two, you have a most two roots. And of course you you know this, you know this to be true over the real numbers. Um, over the complex numbers. Um, but I don't think you know this to be true over every possible field uh, you think of, and but it is true. So um So let's prove it. Um, so um, I guess P is not zero. If it's if the polynomial is zero, uh, every number is a root. So the proof goes um, by induction. So if the if the degree of p is zero, uh, does it have a most zero roots? Does he have exactly zero roots? Um, well, yes, he has to. Um, then p is just a constant. Um, and, it, and it has no roots. So uh, let's do induction. So um, say the degree of P is bigger than zero. Uh, I want to I want to show that it has the most n roots. One thing I could do is assume it has at least one. Um, if so, if P has no roots, I'm done. Yeah, zero roots, uh, zero is less than the degree. Um, so instead, let's assume uh, it has a root. 
um, let's say p of a is zero, then uh, what we know by the by the hard implication here. A is a root if and only if x minus a divides the polynomial. Divides p of x. So we can write p as x minus a times q. Uh, so what's the degree of q? It's going to be one less than the degree of p. It's one less than the degree of p. Um, yeah. Because so degrees had um, when you're working over an integral domain, everything I'm saying goes to shit if the ring is not a is not a, an integral domain. Um, so uh, the degree. The degree is one less. So by the induction hypothesis, Q has uh, a most n minus one roots. So say B is a root of B. Then, um, and I would be saying that zero is b minus a times q of b. So this means that, um, well, a product of two things has to be zero. So I have two options. Either one of them is zero or the other is, um, is one, one of them has to be zero. If this is zero, of course, this means that b equals a and this means that b is a root of q. Um, so the roots of p are a and the roots of q. So if there's um, if there's one one element here and n minus one elements here, um, there's a most n in total. <clears throat> and that's it. Um, Any questions? Okay, uh, so I've said so I've said polynomials have a most uh, and roots uh, depends the degree. So what is an example? Is it true? I mean, do they always have exactly n roots um, of a field? Um, that doesn't have all the roots. Um, I'm asking you. So what's a field um, and a polynomial where that field that has degree n but doesn't have n roots has fewer? Because you know, maybe this is half of a theorem where the other half is there's always exactly n. Right, that's a great example, Duncan. Um, 
on over the real numbers, um, x squared plus one has no roots um, because um, because negative one has no square roots because the square is always positive square of a real number. Um, so this is degree two and zero many roots. Um, and now, so so one thing this polynomial has is that if I if I look at x squared plus one over the complex numbers, um, then then it has two roots. Um, x squared plus one is x minus i times x plus i. So um, So what's an example um, where the number of roots is less than n and it's still less than n? If you make the field um, So in this example, there's zero roots, but if I but I can find them in a in a bigger field. But is there a polynomial that has um, not all the roots, and then no matter how big I, I make the field, I won't be able to find more roots. So what's a degree two polynomial that has only one root? And what's a degree two polynomial that with only one root? Um, X, X minus A squared, oh, there you go. Thank you, Tiago. Uh, yeah, so so basically, what I'm saying, uh, what I'm saying breaks if you if you have if the roots repeats if the roots repeat, then no matter how large you make the field, this is always going to factor as a square, uh, and no other nothing else you plug in here. For example, this polynomial only has a root uh, one. Um, so I should, uh, so another thing I should mention is that this is not true if you're not an over a field, which is, um, very unfortunate. Well, I still consider two roots, right? It's just they happen to be the same you um i mean or you implied yeah. you want unique roots it's kind of it's kind of a question of language um there you know the way i'm, I'm saying it right now i really meant unique roots but of course the answer is you should be uh you should be counting them counting this one twice so you know if I wanted to be specific, I'd probably say roots with multiplicity, something like that, you know. Um, I mean, really, in practice, what happens is people are sloppy and things are confusing, honestly. Um, but I mean, this the point only has one root. I would say it has multiplicity too, and I would say with multiplicity it has two roots. So I would say over the complex numbers, every polynomial has and roots with multiplicity of the VN. <clears throat> um, 
so all I've been saying is false if if we're not over our domain. Um, so for example, um, hope I don't get this wrong, but if you look mod six, um, the polynomial um, um, this polynomial uh, it has a read four and it has six roots. Oh, wait, maybe. Um, I mean, definitely this one has six roots. Um, does this one have six roots? I think so. One of these are multiple of three. Is this even? Yeah. Um, this is so. This polynomial um, this polynomial has more roots than its degree. Um, it's actually if you if you plug in numbers mod six, you always get zero. Uh, oh, which would make it there's six numbers mod six. Um, yeah. Um, so I mean, and and the reason is that. The, the reason is that the um, division fails, division is not unique anymore. And that just breaks everything pretty much. Um, you can factor things in more than one way. It's just uh, really bad overall. Oh, wait. Um, so I guess the question now for a lot of and for a lot of these courses, when the polynomials have roots, like for example, um, how how the polynomials factor, can I can I always find a field where I can find a root? Um, so so here's questions that are not answered. Um, When do polynomials factor or when do they have roots? Um, can I always find roots in a bigger field? Um, is there a field? where all polynomials have n roots. Count them with multiplicity. Is this true over C? I mean, it is true, but I don't know if you know how to prove this. <clears throat> okay, uh, so I guess for Last thing, I'm going to say one thing I accidentally skipped um, Friday due to the death of Windows. Um, is I never really, you know what I mean, but I never really define what plugging in a polynomial is. Um, if we have a polynomial, actually, we have a polynomial ring. If R is a ring, um, and we take an element in the ring, there is a homomorphism. So there is such a thing as plugging in. 
so when you plug in when you plug in a what happens is you take a polynomial and you so let's call it f a you take a polynomial and you get an element in the ring and so what you do is, is of course replace all the excess for a's but i mean um i guess you gotta be careful in showing that that this works um <clears throat> so what i mean is that any polynomial any polynomial gets sent to to this, which is now an element of the in the ring. Um, and what does it mean? So I think I won't prove this. This is you can find it in the book, but it's pretty easy to prove. Um, okay, so I, I guess I've defined it here. Um, what does it mean for it to be a homomorphism? So I guess you need um, the evaluation of zero to be zero. Um, this will mean that plug in x equals a into zero, and you get zero. You need that when you add two polynomials, you get uh, the sum comes out, right? Homomorphism essentially means that some, some products uh, commute with the map. So summing before the map and summing after is the same. So what does it mean to sum? Well, this, this means you first sum and then evaluate. And on the right-hand side, what you're doing is evaluating and then summing, which is, um, of course, it, you know this to be true. Um, and the same thing for multiplying. So in this case, you would have, um, this means multiply, then evaluate. And this means evaluate, then multiply. And I guess lastly, uh, you need that the evaluation of one is one, which of course you plug in x equals a into one, you get one. Um, so of course, I mean, we haven't, so if you take the point of view of the polynomials for functions, um, this is by definition, but we haven't taken the point of view. We've taken the point of view that there's a formula that tells you how to add, and there's a formula that tells you how to multiply. And now what I'm saying is that formula agrees with what uh, plugging in means. Um, all right, so I mean, this is a good perspective to take often. Uh, that's it. So you can stick around and ask me questions.